good morning and welcome you all to this session of the course on fluid machines. Last class we discussed the Pelton wheel, the limitations of Pelton wheel, uh, its specific speed. Now, today we will start the reaction turbine and in continuation of the last class I like to say that it has been appreciated that the Pelton wheel, the impulse turbine like Pelton wheel is not suitable for low head or high specific speed for its efficient operation for which we go to reaction turbine. Now, first of all you have to know what is a reaction turbine as we have already seen that in reaction turbine define the pressure head or static head of the fluid changes in the rotor along with the change of its kinetic head due to change in absolute velocity. Now, if we see the difference between this with respect to the Pelton wheel, in a Pelton wheel the head available at the inlet to the machine that means at the nozzle which is mostly in the form of pressure is totally converted into kinetic energy and the pressure at the exit of the nozzle is the atmospheric pressure and the jet and therefore, the wheels of the Pelton turbine or the Pelton wheel is open to atmosphere and the jet engages at a time one or two or little more blades not all the blades this is because the number of jets are limited and at the same time the jets may not full totally covering the entire area of the spoon shaped bucket. But while in case of a reaction turbine if you compare first thing in the stator that is the nozzle is again a nozzle, but in the different geometrical configuration the inlet pressure head or static head is partly converted into velocity head. So, therefore, the fluid enters to the rotor blades with both at high pressure and high velocity and that pressure is above the atmospheric pressure. For this reason this runner or the rotor blades which are called as runners I will tell afterwards the rotor blades of a reaction turbine have to be made with a casing because this cannot be made open and at the same time the fluid fills the entire passage of the rotor and as it flows through the rotor there is a change in the fluid pressure means there is a change in the static or pressure head of the fluid along with a change in its kinetic energy based on the absolute velocity that is the dynamic head which is known as impulse action that is the basic thing and to accomplish this change in the pressure and in case of turbine the pressure has to be reduced. So, the cross sectional area of flow that is the area normal to the velocity flow velocity has to be a reduced that means the passage has to be a converging passage where the velocity relative to the runner will increase and the pressure will decrease. So, these are the basic differences for from the viewpoint of principle of operation from of a reaction turbine from that of a impulse turbine and mainly the differences have been made with respect to a Pelton wheel. Now, if we see that way we can write a reaction turbine. First of all let us uh, see that we will discuss a reaction turbine which was which is known as Francis turbine a typical reaction turbine which is known as Francis turbine and it was contributed the development was contributed by the scientist James American scientist or engineer James B Francis and after his name it was known as it is named as Francis. this is also in the middle of 19th century this is a radial flow turbine the reaction turbine radial flow type and as you know the turbine always radial inflow because the static head has to reduce. So, this has to be inflow which already I have discussed earlier radial inflow type radial inflow type. So, this is radial inflow type reaction turbine which is known as Francis turbine named after the American engineer Francis who made much to the development of this turbine. Now, the main components of the turbines if you see first is the guide vanes, first is the 
first is not the guide vein, rather I will write first is the scroll casing, scroll casing which is a spiral casing. Number two is the guide vents or stay vents. Number three is the rotor with blades or vents. This is known as runner mainly, this is known as a runner and number 4 is the drop tube. So, a radial flow reaction turbine is a Francis turbine is a typical radial flow reaction turbine, Francis turbine consists of 4 main components, one is scroll casing. Now, these components I have written in order of the sequence of flow path, the flow enters first in scroll casing which is a spiral casing then guide vanes or stay vanes, these are fixed vanes, Rot then rotor with blades. Now, these two are fixed and actually this can be viewed as the stator of the machine. Then rotor which is mounted to the shaft and rotates with the angular constant angular speed, the blades and vanes are there which are known as runner. This is the rotor of the machine and finally, at the discharge end of the runner, a fixed tube is added which is known as draft tube before the water leaves or before the water is reject, ejected or discharged at the level which is known as tail race. That means, the draft tube is a fixed tube which is attached to the outlet of the runner through which the water ultimately flows to the sump or to that level where the water is discharged. For example, in the river which we call as the tail race. So, these four main parts constitute a reaction turbine, Francis type reaction turbine. So, with this in the background, let us see how for a simple diagram, how does it look like. Now, here this is the spiral casing or the scroll casing or sometimes this is known as volute, volute, volute casing or here you can write scroll casing, both the name is there, scrolling, scroll casing or volute casing. Here also for correction we can write, this is another terminology, volute, scroll casing or volute or sometimes volute casing also. Now, the water enters at high pressure here and it flows in this direction. In the, this is a typical spiral casing which provides an area which is reducing or it is reduced in the direction of the flow along through this scroll casing. The purpose of this reduction I will tell afterwards. Now, here you see there is a number of fixed blades which is pivoted which are pivoted at this point. These are the pivot points, these are pivoted at this point, these are pivoted at this point. So, these are pivoted at this point and for a given fixed position, this allows the flow to flow through this passage. So, what happens as the flow comes and flows at the water comes and flows through the spiral casing, the flow enters like this. This is the flow enters in the passage of the this blades. These are known as these are known as guide vents or wicket gates. These are known as guide vents or wicket gates. These these are stator part of the turbine. Now, what happens? The flow is entering into this passage of guide vanes or wicket gates. So, therefore, the flow rate gets reduced in this direction. So, the area is accordingly reduced, so that the velocity of flow in the spiral casing is meant constant. 
So, to maintain the uniformity of the velocity along its flow direction, this area is reduced since the flow is entering into this passage. So, this passage you see is a convergent type, which means here what happens when this enters here, the pressure is reduced and velocity is increased. So, therefore, a part of the pressure is reduced here while it flows through this. So, the part of the pressure head which is available here is reduced while it flows through this. This creates a convergent passage and this is designed in such a way that it has two purposes. It reduces the pressure and increases the velocity and at the same time it directs the fluid or water here properly to these runner blades. These are the runner blades. These are written as, these are shown as this is runner blades. That means, this is mounted on the rotating disc, this is the shaft. So, these blades are runner blades. So, therefore, the fluid enters like this in the blade passages of the runner blades as this rotates. So, therefore, it is a radial inward flow. Flow comes here, flows through the wicket gate or guide vents, where the purpose is that it provides a converging passage, pressure is reduced and velocity is increased. So, at the same time it directs the fluid to the proper angle by which it can glide. That means, it will match the angle of the runner blade, so that it can glide through the runner blade and flows through the blade passages. At the inlet it has a high velocity and high pressure also and it is an inward flow. And at the same time if you see the flow passages of the runner blades made by the runner blade is also converging. That means, when the fluid flows to the runner blade by the impulse action its velocity is reduced and also its pressure is reduced. And finally, at the outlet of the runner it is suddenly turned to the axial direction in this direction. This is not, it cannot be shown in this two dimensional plane that is the plane of the paper it is shown. That means, this flow is coming like this which is basically radial and tangential direction the flow is mo has mostly the radial velocity and the tangential velocity. It is mostly in the radial and tangential direction, bulk flow is in the radial direction. It has both radial velocity and tangential velocity, but while coming through the runner at the outlet, it suddenly turns to the axial direction like this. That means, this enters in the radial direction that suddenly at the, let us consider a horizontal runner from the wicked get or the guide vents to the runner blade it comes radially and then at the end of the runner blade it takes a 90 degree turn and goes radially like this which is the axial direction goes sorry radially you know goes axially the axial direction and goes through a tube known as drop tube. So, drop tube is attached here which is not shown at the outlet of the runner. So, this is the basic principle sometimes the additional uh, blades are also given here, which are known as stavins. Stavins are actually this guide vein. Here, some additional veins are sometimes given to direct us. These are known as stavins to direct the fluid to the wicket gate. Now, wicket gates are stavins are pivoted at these points. The reason because because reason of this is that the wicket gates can be rotated about this pivotal point. So, that this can increase or decrease the flow passage area between these two blades. This is required for changing the fluid flow to the runner for its governing due to the change in load. That is why these guide vanes or wicket gates are pivoted. There may be additional guide vanes known as stay vanes. So, therefore, we see the guide vanes or wicket gates or stay vents. First, it comes to the scroll casing or volute casing, then it flows to the guide vents, stay vents. The purpose of these vents are to direct the fluid to the runner and at the same time, the change in pressure, they reduce the static pressure by providing a converging area of flow, cross sectional area of flow. And it properly directs the fluid to the runner blade passages and it flows to runner blade passages and comes out of the drop tube finally to the tail rest level. Let us have a look 
to this picture. Let us have a look to this picture. I do not know how much it will be. If you see this picture is clear, this is actually the turbines in practice. This is the vertical shaft. Just have a look, how does it look, the Francis turbine. This is the this is the practical diagram taken from some, I cannot exactly tell you the reference that this is a scroll casing or the spiral casing, it comes here. So, it is difficult to understand. So, this is the place, there is the wicket gates, the stay vents are there, these are the stay vents, these are the wicket gates and this is the runner, ultimately it comes out. So, this flows in this direction from the spiral case, this direction this is the radially inward flow direction. But finally, at the outlet of the runner, this is turned axially and this is the draft tube. Stay vents, this is draft tube, these are the runner blades. So, this is the overall picture of a uh, Francis reaction turbine. So, it is very difficult to understand in details because it is not possible, but you can have a now, idea how does it look like and then the final water is discharged through this and the purpose of the draft tube I tell you here is to reduce the kinetic energy of the water at the outlet. That means, the water which is discharged from the machine at some velocity is carrying a kinetic energy and that is a wastage, wastage of energy to reduce that waste energy that is the kinetic energy of the water discharged from the machine a tube is attached whose area of cross section increases. This is basically a diverging tube, a divergent tube. So, that the flow velocity at the outlet of this tube is much smaller compared to that of the outlet of the runner. So, that the ultimate velocity you have to discharge the water and to discharge the water you have to have some velocity. So, you cannot make this velocity 0. So, it should be kept as minimum as possible. Then this drop tube is a part of the machine and finally, the discharge or outlet of the drop tube is the discharge and outlet of the machine and this comes with a relatively low velocity at the tail race level. So, that the kinetic energy wasted is or the kinetic energy loss which cannot be utilized for power generation is kept to minimum. So, after this we now well Okay, this has already been explained. Okay. Now, uh, to understand the purpose of the draft tube and the principle of operation of a reaction machine, we should first know how the different energy quantities that head energy per unit to it is being defined as the fluid flows through the different components of the Francis reaction turbine. Okay. Basic purpose of the draft tube as I have told to reduce the kinetic energy at the outlet of the machine and at the same time to keep the Francis runner at a much higher height than the tail race level without sacrificing any energy that any head because people apparently it seems that if you place it much above. So, you lose some potential energy because the tail race is at a lower level and our turbine is at a higher level, but you can keep it provided you attach a draft tube which is a part of the turbine itself. So, to understand that that thing more clearly we see this particular diagram. Here we see that this is the height of water at a higher altitude stored water and this is the pipeline which leads from that reservoir at that high altitude to the turbine. This is the turbine and this is known as pin stock. This is known as pin stock this is known as pin stock, this the terminology, this pipeline. This comes to the turbine and this is the draft tube as I have shown you. So, the turbine 
is a vertical shaft turbine this comes like that flows inward this is small diagram line diagram schematic of turbine then it changes axially and then flows this is the draft. Now, you see the gross head is H 0 let us consider this label the tail race label this label as the datum then the gross head is H 0 the gross head is H 0. Now, if we write the head H 1 at the inlet to the turbine this point 1 this comprises the pressure head P 1 by rho g plus the velocity there of the fluid or the water V 1 square by 2 g plus this j. And if we write the Bernoulli's equation between this point and a point at this inlet along a streamline, we can write H 0 is equal to P 1 by rho g plus V 1 square by 2 g plus j don that is modified Bernoulli's equation which is written by considering the viscous force or the influence of the viscous dissipation through a loss term that is the loss of heat means the dissipation of mechanical energy into intermolecular energy which is manifested as loss from the account of the mechanical energy that is why in Bernoulli's equation modified Bernoulli's equation in consideration of the viscous effects we use a term loss of heat that is loss of energy per unit weight, but this loss of energy is loss of mechanical energy which is being converted to intermolecular energy due to fluid friction. As such energy cannot be lost this has been told categorically in the fluid mechanics class. So, therefore, we can write this we consider as H 1 that means the head the total energy per unit weight total head at inlet to the turbine. So, H 1 is therefore, H 0 minus H f. So, here it is shown diagrammatically that this is H 0 and this is H f, H f is shown this is the frictional loss. So, therefore, this H 1 is the head at inlet to the machine. Now, what will be the head that the machine or the turbine will utilize? This will be inlet head minus the head which is rejecting. So, therefore, if we defined H as head across the turbine that means, the head across the turbine the meaning is that the head which the turbine is enable to utilize to develop mechanical energy that will be H 1 minus the kinetic energy loss at the end or discharge of the machine that means, at the end of the draft tube the section is 3 and this is V 3 square by 2 g. So, this is the kinetic energy loss that means, the velocity head. So, this portion is shown as V 3 square by 2 g. So, therefore, this H is the net head producing work this is known as head across the turbine or net head producing work both the terminology go. So, this equals to H 1 minus. So, therefore, you see the purpose of this providing this draft tube is that V 3 square by 2 g is very low to keep because this area is much higher. So, that this is low. So, that this net head across the turbine or the net head producing work is close to the head at the inlet. But now, one difficulty you see that if you write the Bernoulli's equation at inlet and outlet of the draft tube, we can write that P 2 by rho g plus V 2 square by 2 2 g is equal to P 3 by rho g plus V 3 square by 2 g. If we neglect the friction in the draft tube, draft tube is small. So, if we neglect the friction in the draft tube, then we can write the Bernoulli's equation between a point at inlet and outlet along a streamline. So, we can write that P 2 by rho g. Now, here one thing this pressure head we are using this pressure is above the atmospheric pressure that is one very important thing. Otherwise, we could not write that this is the loss total energy loss because this we consider the pressure is atmospheric. So, if we consider here also this P 2 is the pressure above atmospheric gauge pressure 
P3 is 0 because P3 is the atmospheric pressure, it discharges in the atmospheric pressure. So, P2 by rho g therefore, in consideration of all the pressure head is above the atmospheric head that means, the pressure is defined above the atmospheric pressure, then one can write P 2 by rho g is equal to what plus sorry I have missed something P 2 by rho g plus V 2 square by 2 g sorry plus z. So, P 2 by rho g is minus z comes here plus z minus z plus v 3 square minus v 2 square that can be written as v 2 square minus v 3 square by 2 g that may be given v 2 square. I am sorry that z has to be written this elevation head. So, at the point 2 pressure is p 2 by rho g v 2 square by 2 g plus z at this point z is 0 pressure P 3 at the point 3 is 0, because this pressure is defined above the atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure V t square. Now, here you see, because of this divergence in area, this V 3 is less than V 2 and this is the purpose of the draft tube. So, this is positive, this is positive. So, therefore, we see the inlet pressure of the draft tube is below the atmospheric pressure and it is obvious from a physical sense that if you decrease the velocity at the outlet and discharge it to the ambient pressure, that means here pressure has to be less because decrease in velocity is associated with an increase in pressure. So, if pressure is increased up to the atmospheric pressure, so pressure in the upstream has to be less than the atmospheric pressure. From simple common sense, you can find it by writing the Bernoulli's equation, you can write it. But if you take care of the frictional losses, this will be little modified, but it is true that the pressure at the inlet to this draft tube will be negative. So, that is a danger and we have to see that this pressure should not go below the vapor pressure of the water at the working temperature. For example, normal temperature, if we know the vapor pressure of the water, so this pressure should not fall below that, otherwise water will start boiling and the vapor bubbles will be generated that is known as cavitation that we will discuss afterward to avoid that we pressure we have to be very careful. So, therefore, there is a limitation of the jet above which it has to be kept so that the cavitation does not occur. Another thing you have to appreciate that this jet does not come into picture in the head across the turbine because this is a part of the turbine. So, turbine can be kept at any height without sacrificing any head because if the turbine, if there was no draft tube, the outlet, the loss of energy at the outlet. So, this head across the turbine H could have been H 1 minus if this was there V 2 square by 2 g minus j. So, in that case what happened? V 2 square by 2 g is high because V 2 is higher than V 3 and at the same time the j coming into picture. So, that net head producing work or the head across the turbine gets reduced. So, therefore, we can keep make the draft tube to reduce this kinetic energy at the discharge of the machine by reducing it from V 2 to V 3 and at the same time we can place the turbine above the tail rest level at any jet without sacrificing the net head producing work or head across the turbine, but there is a limitation we cannot go to a very high jet otherwise this P 2 by rho g the pressure at the inlet to the turbine which is the minimum pressure point should not go below the vapor pressure of the water at the working temperature that initiates the nucleation of vapor, vapor in the liquid vapor bubbles which causes cavitation. This phenomena is known as cavitation I will discuss it after all. So, this gives you an overall picture how the gross head this is the gross head this is the gross head, how the gross head, head at the inlet to the turbine, head across the turbine or the net head producing work, the purpose of draft tube which is very important in terms of the head of the Francis turbine is also understood. Thank you and next class we will go for the analysis of force 
and the power in the Francis runner. Okay, thank you.